Well, welcome back to Luther College High School here in Regina. I'm here with some talented people, in case you didn't hear before. And I'm here with uh, Brianna. Now, Brianna, you're the president of the choir here. Now, how have you seen the group come together? Because this is a tradition that happens every year, and you're bringing in new faces all the time. Yes. Well, we grow as a choir by being dedicated and committed and coming to our practices on time. And just getting to bond with each other and getting to know each other more helps the choir grow in a huge way. And now this group is going to be able to perform this weekend. Can you just quickly tell us again about the event and the times and everything where people can get information? Yes, the event is a long-standing Luther tradition and it's where the music program is completely featured, where we have different groups like Ave and Senior Choir and the handbells and the bands and strings. And uh, we have two services, one at 2.30 and one at 7.30 at Trinity Evangelical Lutheran Church. And everyone is welcome to attend. Now tell me about the song you're about to perform. Uh, we're going to be performing Therefore Be Merry. Perfect. How about we all stand and enjoy this? A virgin most pure as the prophets do tell Hath brought forth a baby as it hath befell To be a redeemer from death, hell, and sin Which Adam's transgressions hath wrapped us in And therefore be merry, says so the busiest day of the year across Canada for mail carriers and, and postal workers because of the Christmas season. Isn't that right, Gary Palmer? That, that's correct. <laughs> We've uh, got our, the trucks arriving in, in Regina these today, uh, very full of mail, and uh, we've been processing hard to get all that product out on the street for our customers. Now, you're the manager of operations here, so you've seen everything. Now, what is... Give some advice to people at home because I wanted to set this up because I still have Christmas cards to send. Mm. Are my cousins in Holland or my Zia in Ontario, are they going to get my Christmas cards in time? Uh, for Christmas, uh, Ukrainian Christmas is coming and they'll probably deliver it well in time for that. Okay. But uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry this Christmas, no. Okay, so if there's people sitting at home saying, okay, I've got, I still have a couple of things to send, what do they need to do? Well, you need to get down to your post office right away and, uh, you know, we're working very hard uh, right through the weekend this weekend, delivering right till the 24th and, you know, we're going to work very hard to get everybody's package delivered in time for Christmas. Okay, is there anything that we're not allowed to send? Oh, well, certainly uh, there's a lot of dangerous goods out there that you're not allowed to send, but certainly aerosol cans and flammables and, you know, really common sense type stuff. Good morning. We're here at Jack McKenzie in Regina with a very, very special guest, Handles Franklin. Welcome. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. Great. Now, Handles, when you first started out liking basketball, you were six and you were watching the Harlem Globetrotters, you really wanted to be on this team. Yes, you know, I saw the Harlem Globetrotters on Scooby-Doo and I knew I either wanted to solve mysteries or play for the Globetrotters. So it's truly my lifelong dream. I'm truly living a dream. That's awesome because that's when I first got actually introduced to the Harlem Globetrotters. I've seen you guys play live and Scooby-Doo is one of my favorites. But tell us about the show that's coming up. There's a new twist to it. Yes, yeah, so we've been around 87 years, so we have a lot of those things that sustained us uh, uh, throughout the generations, but now we have our You Write the Rules Tour, which we're excited about because fans can vote on the rules of the game, and that night at the game, we have to play by the rules that the fans voted for. Wow, so how did you come up with that idea? Was that just you or somebody else got me, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what, we try to do unique things to get, keep our uh, fans involved. You know, we're about family entertainment, and we love that family interaction during the game. So it's just fitting that they have that family action uh, interaction before the game also. Perfect. Now, when are you going to be back in Regina? It's in January 7th, is that right? Yes, January 7th we will be uh, in Regina and we'll be playing with our pink basketball, which we can't wait. We're happy about. We're bringing awareness to breast cancer. We can't, be here. We can't wait to be here playing for the fans. Perfect. And you know what? We're going to get you warmed up and get you through a couple of drills and we're going to try it out, okay? Is that okay, okay with you? Yes, that sounds good. I'm ready. Perfect. Stay tuned for that. Good morning, we're here at the Cooperator Center here in Regina talking about a very special female hockey tournament coming up with 58 teams. Isn't that right, Mr. Coach Brad Ritz of the Bantam Wild? Yes, it is. Uh, we have 58 teams from around the province, some from out of province coming in to play. Uh, we've got, this is our 20th year, which is an awesome thing too. It's 20 years in the running, Sastel Female Challenge, and uh, the girls are pumped to play, I'm sure, because every time they come, they have a great time, and this great facility helps that out too. So, so do you think that with some teams coming from Calgary that maybe Team Canada might come and send a couple scouts out, see what's up? Uh, the midget ranks, there probably is somebody out there looking for uh, older girls and stuff like that, so they're for the younger ones, they're starting out and everything. I don't think too many scouts are looking at them yet, but you never know. 
So with all this going on, how do you prepare your team for battle? Ah, it's girls hockey, so it's not, it, they say it's not the same as boys, but I've coached girls for as, much as, as long as I've coached my son too, playing hockey, and we coach them the same way, we prep them the same way as anybody else. It's still a game of hockey, so as far as that goes, you don't, you don't do anything different really with girls. They put on skates and play with hockey. Sticks but and pucks. With tournaments so. like this, we're proving that hockey's alive and well in Regina. Isn't oh, yeah, definitely. We've taken a look at the George Clooney of Amaryllis because it's a pretty good looking plant. <laughs> because, is. well, I say it like I, I lead like that, Jessica, because <laughs> this one would probably be something as a result of my plant saving Your skills. Care. Yeah, as yeah, a result exactly. of my care. So, two things we're yeah. going to do right now yes. is talk about how we're going to save our poinsettia, but yeah. first, are they poisonous? I heard they were. Somebody told me they were. I said, yeah. don't give them as teacher's gifts because the kids in the class are going to rip off the yeah. leaves, eat them, and then we're going to yeah. have problems. No, they're actually not poisonous. Um, Good. But like anything, I mean, if you eat this, you probably will get some symptoms like a tummy ache and things like that. But um, no, they're not poisonous to cats or dogs or kids, but still we don't recommend eating them or putting <laughs> so it in your salad. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't put it in no. a poinsettia salad. <laughs> so how do we make it look like this beautiful one here and not yeah. this one? So the first thing you want to do when you get it home is you actually want to take the foil off because this keeps all the water sitting at the base and it can okay. be really unhealthy. And you also want to make sure that it doesn't dry out completely and you want to water it. You don't want to water over the leaves but just into the soil here. So keep it nice and damp. Well then how much is too much? Like how, how do you make sure you that you don't got want it right sopping about? and dripping but just you know the towel damp like a towel almost when it's okay. a little damp. So and that should keep it um, relatively good. Our houses are really dry in the winter so you just need to keep an eye on it. If it starts to even look like this Give a little water and that should perk it up. And I'm assuming that's the same with the amaryllis, right? We keep yeah. that thing, yeah. Yeah, well that's perfect because mm -hmm. great, great gifts, you they know, are. as long as you keep them, don't give them to me though. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Amaryllis, yes, I'll just get my husband to take care of it. There you go. There Sounds you go. like a plan. Sounds like a plan. <laughs>